Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear, and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. This is the extended review of the Nightcore MH20. All right, so here we are with the Nightcore MH20. Pretty cool light, really compact. It's an 18650 light, has built-in charging. Some specs on the front, so you've got a thousand lumens, runs on a Cree XML2 LED, and then you've got some more specs on the side. You've got a beam distance of 220 meters. And then as always, you can find the full specs on our site, goinggear.com. All right, let's go and open this up and show you what's in the packaging. If I can get it out without demolishing it. All right, here's the user manual. I've said this in a lot of reviews, but Nightcore does a really good job with their user manuals. They're well written, lots of useful information in there. You've got ANSI spec tables. You've got how to access all the different modes, uh, some basic maintenance and, and troubleshooting and warranty information. Really good manual, so definitely take a look at that when you get the light. Warranty information, and then here are the actual goods. So here's a holster. We're going to show you what the light looks like in that in a little bit. And uh, the accessories that you get. So you have a lanyard, you have some spare O-rings, and you have a pocket clip if you want to use a pocket clip. And then you have a micro USB cable. So this is just a standard micro USB cable. I really like the trend that, uh, well, pretty much every industry is going to, but they're using more standard cables. You know, you see micro USB a lot of places, and uh, that's really nice because you don't have to worry about some proprietary cable that you're going to lose or if it's going to break and you have to worry about a replacement or something like that. Most of us have a lot of these sitting around the house. I probably have about 30 sitting in the general vicinity of uh, where I'm shooting right now. So it's nice they're using a standard cable that you can replace very cheaply and easily. Uh, so here is the light itself. Again, this is an 18650 light. So this thing is really compact. And a big way that they did that is they put the switch on the side. So if you look at the size of an 18650, you know, normally... The light that's going to be uh, this is going to be powering is going to be much larger than this little guy right here. So it's a nice compact little light, not a whole lot longer than the 18650 itself. Pretty cool way they had that set up, and it has a decent size head on it. So a light this size, a lot of times it'll have the smaller, more compact head, and even with a thousand lumens, you're looking at 150 meters or so. So because this has that larger head, the larger reflector, you get 220 meters of beam distance out of it, which is nice. Let's shove all that out of the way. Actually, let's do the holster real quick so I can show you what that looks like. Nightcore has really stepped up their game on their holsters. They're this nice, thick, heavy-duty nylon. They hold up really well. They protect the light really well. So you can see you've got the hook and loop closure on the front. You've got the hook and loop attachment on the back if you want to do that. That plastic D-ring, and then you've got another slot you can slide onto your belt or pack or wherever else you want to you want to put it. Pretty standard holster, but it definitely is a step above the quality of what we see from a lot of manufacturers. It's a nice, thick, sturdy material. All right, let's zoom in and we'll show you the light a little bit more up close. All right, so here's the light. Here is the micro USB charging port. So you just flip that up, stick the cable in, stick the other end into your car or wall adapter or cigarette adapter or whatever you have that can uh, run some USB juice. Uh, stick it into your laptop, your computer, a whole lot of different things you can stick a USB cable into and get some power. Uh, there's the switch right there. So it's this two-stage switch, similar to what they use on the Tiny Monster series, uh, some of the EC lights and a lot of the other different lights. Kind of an interesting thing. Uh, so it's kind of like where you have the camera shutter switch where you got the half press for the focus and then the full click for the shutter release, kind of a similar concept, and I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. There's the LED and the reflector. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus in. There we go. Cree XML2 LED down in there. Again, a relatively large reflector, and it is smooth, so there's no texturing on there, so it gives you still a nice clean beam. You'll see that better when we go outside, but uh, it gives you that decent amount of distance. And then there's the tail cap and everything. You can see the lettering on it whole lot of surface area up here and you've got some heat sinking there you got some fins just to help dissipate that heat give you some more surface area so this thing actually uh, doesn't get too hot I mean when it's running on max yeah it's going to get a little hot but not nearly as bad as something that has a much smaller head just because it has so much more surface area all right let's open it up and we'll show you the inside of the light and we're going to throw a battery in there so this thing came with a silica gel packet, but I've already been playing with this light, so it's not in there. Uh, you can see the circuitry there in the head. 
And I've shown this in other videos, but this is a really good way to separate the good lights from the bad lights. So people always ask us, you know, what am I getting when I spend 50 or 60 bucks or 80 bucks or whatever this thing is uh, versus, you know, some thing you get on eBay or Amazon for 10 bucks. Well, a lot of those, when you open it up, you're going to see a lot of dirty solders in there. You're going to see just poor craftsmanship on the inside. So on the inside of the light, you can look inside and see everything's nice and clean. You got that nice, good looking circuit board on the inside. Craftsmanship on the inside of the tube is nice. You got the nice thick walls, nice threads, nice way it sees the O-ring. You've got lubrication on there. Um, just a lot of touches, and that's what you get when you pay more. And also, you get better warranty. You get better customer service. Or, well, you actually get any customer service or any warranty at all because a lot of the, uh, the budget guys don't offer that, I can tell you from personal experience. Anyway, the battery that we're going to put in there is an Olight 3400 milliamp hour 18650. It's by far our most popular battery, really good high quality batteries using Panasonic cells. So we're going to stick the head on there and we're going to show you the interface and everything of the light. So two stage switch. You can see it's lighting up. It's actually going to blink and give you the voltage of the battery. So it looks like this is about 3.5 volts, so not a whole lot of power on this thing. So I'll be sure I put a freshly charged one in it before I go outside. Uh, but anyway, the interface on here, you've got that two-stage switch. So this has a blue blinking standby. And the way to access that is if you do that half press, do that light press, you can see that it starts blinking. So it's kind of a nice little indicator light. If you're in the really, really dark situations, uh, basically where there's no light, that is enough to see the light. So you will be able to see it on the ground. You'll be able to see it on your nightstand. And it's just a really brief, ble brief flash. I'm having trouble talking tonight. Um, and Nightcore says that this light will run for about 12 months, even with that flash activated. So it's not like it's draining some incredible amount of power or anything like that. And then you can just do that half press again to turn it off. And if you want to completely lock it out, just loosen the head and that'll break the connection. And that's the easiest way for the vast majority of lights out there to truly break the connection instead of having to worry about any lockouts through the switch or anything like that. All right, so the rest of the interface, to get it to actually turn on, uh, there's a couple different things you can do. You can get to uh, the low and the high from off. And the way to do that is if you press and hold with that half press, it goes to the lowest. And then if you press and hold with the full press, it'll go to the highest. So from off, you can get to the max, you can get to the min, and you can get to your memorized mode. So really cool interface they have on here. And the way to get to the memorized mode is you just do a full press, It'll turn it on to wherever you had it in last, and then you can just tap it, do the half press, and it'll cycle through the different outputs. And see if you turn it off, turn it back on, as long as you're not doing the press and hold and either the uh, half press or the full press, you can see it's going to go back into the memorized mode. There's also some flashing modes in there. So have it turned on, press and hold the switch, it'll go into strobe, do a half press, and it'll go into SOS. One more half press and it'll go into beacon where it flashes every few seconds or so. And then if you want to get straight into strobe while it's in either of those modes uh, other than strobe, you can just press and hold and it'll go straight into strobe. And it's a pretty quick press. So you get in there nice and quickly. So nice interface. You got a lot of versatility in here. I mean, it's pretty easy to figure out. Just press that switch and you get light. And, uh, you know, once you figure out the half press, you know, most people, that's all they're going to use. But for those advanced operations, you got the flashing modes, and it's nice to know that you can get right to the lowest and the highest modes. It's nice to have that in there. Uh, so, again, real quick on the operation. So do a half press and hold to get to the lowest, full press and hold to get to the highest. And when it's on, you can tap that side switch. It'll cycle through your different outputs. And then the, the flashing modes, press and hold, and then do a half press to cycle through those different flashing modes. Just to show you the size difference, here's another Nightcore 18650 light. So this is an MT26. You can see the size difference. You know, that's what you get when you have no tail cap that has a switch in it. And then also you can run the battery further up in the light because they're putting the side switch on that larger head and uh, you can run the battery further up. So the battery is running to basically right here in the MT26, but it's able to run up into the actual head on the MH20. So it's a nice compact size. You get that great output. You get the decent throw. And it's not an unreasonable size to put in your pocket. If you're wearing skinny jeans, yeah, maybe it's a little too big for that kind of stuff. But uh, you're wearing a little, little bit looser fitting stuff, then uh, it'll slide into your pocket easily. 
And of course, you can throw it in a pack or anything like that. And it's not too bad on the size and weight. Okay, so that's the interface and everything of the MH20. We're going to go and take it outside, and we'll show you how it does outside. All right, we got the MH20 outside. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use as a control. Let's go and try the mag light out first. Little tree right there is about 30 feet away. Dock house down there on the lake is about 100 feet away. There's your mag light. Let's try out that MH20. Little monster of a light. 1,000 lumens in this compact little thing. So the tree is just completely lit up. Kind of too bright in that kind of distance. And then 100 feet away, it's lighting that up really well. Let's zoom in on that just so you can see. I mean, that's what modern technology is going to get you. Nice compact little light using that 18650. Modern LEDs, modern circuitry and everything. This tiny little thing that you can fit in your pocket. Nice lightweight little lights putting out that kind of distance, that kind of lumens. Pretty impressive. So nice wide hot spot there. Gives you some decent distance, but it's also going to give you a nice bright spill and you got a good transition between the two. I'll shine that around. Let me show you the other outputs. I'll just cycle through those. And on your lowest one, you can see good for up close kind of stuff. Gets you the really good battery life. Got to come up with new taglines. <laughs> I shoot a lot of these in a, in a night and I'm like, man, I've said that a lot. But, you know, when you start using the same components, the same batteries, there's only so much you can do. But still, this is a really cool implementation of a lot of different stuff. You've got a, not a lot, lot of nice things in the light. You've got a built-in recharging. You've got the nice compact size, decent distance, good lumens on it. Uses an 18650. Good combination of a lot of different things. So we have a little bit distance, more, a little bit more distance to work with. Let's go ahead and try out the longer distance. All right, we got some more space to try out the MH20. Let's go ahead and give it a shot with over 100 yards. Boat right there is at about 20 feet away. Got a couple targets set up out there. One on the right is at 50 yards. One on the left is 100 yards. Tree line is 130 yards. Making out to all of those, no problem. Got that nice compact little light with a relatively large reflector. Gives you some pretty decent distance. You got that 1,000 lumens. You got the built-in charging. You got the compact size, taste the 18650. Pretty cool little light. I like this guy a lot. Nice interface with that soft touch camera style where you do the half presses to get through your different outputs and then that full click to turn it off. Shine it around a little bit, cycle through the different outputs. I like this light. It's a nice little light. If you like it, you can buy it from us at goinggear.com. Any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments or any of my guys at goinggear.com. If you like the video, please subscribe. Do a lot of gear and flashlight videos. As always, get going and start something. Thanks for watching.